Coming up on Mountain News this morning, a group of local organizations come together to spread some awareness about the opioid epidemic in our region. And a local nonprofit hosts an event to kick off the spring season by having some fun while spending time in nature. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning to you. It's 531, almost 532 on this Monday morning. I'm Dakota Makris. Good morning to you. And let's check in with Brandon for a look of our spring forecast this morning. And Brandon, that video that was just played, the second tease, why don't you and I plan a hike and go and take one? Could you see us out on the trails just hiking? Listen, I don't this these days I don't know how much I can do with that, <laughs> especially this medicine I'm taking. But yeah. uh, I need to start training for that 5K I've got coming up here in May. But uh, you one of these days. Exactly, exactly. One of those days we'll get along to it. Let's get into the forecast this morning. A little bit uh, cool down toward Mount Vernon there along I-75. We're continuing to see, again, uh, clear skies out there. Not so clear on the camera, but we're getting out there this morning. 30 in Monticello to 46 in Jackson. That is the warm and cool spots this morning. So you may need a couple of minutes to kind of get your cars ready to go this morning. Patchy frost, a possibility. Sunrise, 735. Sunset, 746. And it will be a chilly morning. And then as we head into, again, later parts of the day, up to about 70, but a few more clouds in the mix. Dakota. All right, Brendan, thank you so much. Well, Matthew Black, an administrator for Clear Creek Baptist College, died Friday morning. A social media post from Matthew's wife, Ruth, said he died at, a, at home from an unspecified illness. She said he had appeared to be getting better. Black, a graduate of Clear Creek, went into ministry after college he was a pastor in Wilmington, Ohio for six years before coming back to Clear Creek to serve as the Dean of Institutional Advancement, where he was for the past four years. Services will be held 11 a.m. on Wednesday, March 23rd in the Chapel of Southern Oaks Funeral Home. 20 organizations came together in Perry County during the weekend hosting a black balloon event. Those involved wanted to spread awareness for the ongoing opioid epidemic. Our Chaz Jenkins has more. Trying to bring awareness to the opioid epidemic, showing support for those battling addiction. We are having the Black Bloom uh, represent anyone that has overdosed. They can come out and they can sign their loved one's name in remembrance of. Made possible through a strong collaboration of several organizations. The outreach that people has done has been amazing. Um, the compassion that these people show that they go out on a day-to-day -day basis trying to help everyone is just, it's awesome. Community members grateful and supportive of such an event. I used to, you know, I, I used to, uh, uh, I was into that alcohol and drugs, and uh, today I'm saved by God's grace, and, and I live my life for God in the church. Hoping to see people take advantage of what they have to offer. It's a good cause, and uh, anybody should come out and support it because that's helping other people. You know, uh, if you've been through it, then, then you can help them. And that's what I like to do. Wanting to see more events like this in the future. We're just doing so many different things to try to help them, trying to link them into care and the care that they need. We're trying to meet them where they're at. Giving those who need it a strong support system. In Perry County, Chaz Jenkins, WYMT Mountain News. Well, to kick off the spring season yesterday, Pathfinders of Perry County, Kentucky hosted a hiking event. Around eight hikers gathered at Perry County Park. While there, they hiked about one mile of the park's trails. Environmental educator David Logsdon says it is important for everyone to see what the county has to offer. During the pandemic, I think it became really clear that people had a desire to be outside more and to be healthier. Um, and Perry County uh, Pathfinders, our mission uh, involves um, the health and well-being of our community and outdoor education and recreation. Well, he says this is one of the many hikes the group plans to host this year. He says the next one will be as early as next month. Sunday marked the beginning of the spring this year, and the Lexington Flower Shop is getting gardeners ready for the season. Joe Ellis and his wife have owned the Sunshine Grow Shop since 1983 and have four locations in Lexington. Ellis says if you want to start planting a garden this spring, it's best to have a plan. Well, they say it's usually smart to plant after derby season, but there are some plants that can take a little chill. 
And you know, you can garden early as long as you garden smart. There's a lot of plants that can take cool weather. You know, if it were to drop down to 25 or even 20 degrees, pansies and violas, they'll be fine. Well, the last freeze in Kentucky is usually between April 20th and May 3rd, and Ellis says the end of April, it, a, April's too, it, too early. June is usually when you can find the best and most abundant selection of flowers. He says there's nothing more therapeutic than enjoying the outside with your family. A North Kentucky card trading spot hosted its grand opening Saturday with free card packs and giveaways. Hit Seeker Sports Cards now has a brick and mortar in the Fort Mitchell area after just two years of online streaming. Owner Greg Rouse, who has been collecting cards since 1971, says that goal of, of the hit seekers is to spread a message. Baseball cards are cool again. Helps with so many things from allocation to card availability and most importantly, just building a community around the hobby. The shop isn't just about baseball cards though. Star Wars, golf, Pokemon, and UFC cards are some of the other collectibles. Hit Seekers also includes a scoreboard to see its upcoming releases and featured beverages. A Lexington pet store is asking for the public's help in identifying a couple who allegedly stole an animal. Surveillance video shows a woman slide a monkey-tailed skink, which is a reptile, into her jacket. Jeremy Toms has more on this story. Melissa Witten owns Most Valuable Pets and says she was in shock when she realized that someone stole a rare lizard from her store on Saturday night. Witten says they were about to close up shop when this all unfolded. They came straight in the door, straight over to the cage and took him. These people made off with the store's only monkey-tailed skink named Petey, which Witten says is both rare and beloved. They have a wide array of animals, but Witten says even losing one breaks their hearts. And she says Petey's capture could be harmful. So time is of the essence when it comes to relocating him. Special food requirements. He's a very picky eater. So he's got about a three week window of opportunity if he doesn't eat um, before he, his health will drastically decline. Witten says they have filed a police report, but they don't want to press charges or prosecute. All they want is to get Petey back. And they hope the people responsible will return him. In Lexington, Jeremy Toms, WKYT. Well, bear sightings, they're not uncommon in East Tennessee, but what about ones with three legs? That's what was spotted in Oxford this past week. Jody Williams at Help Asheville Bears says 36 three-legged bears have been spotted since 2019. Williams says the animal likely lost the leg due to a snar trap. He adds that missing a limb makes it tougher to care for their children and climb trees. Tennessee trapping regulations state it's also illegal to use a bear trap. Williams believe that these hunters are trapping bears to sell parts like their paw on the black market. The Kentucky Transportation Cabinet shared a news release Friday morning that shoulder repair work will be starting soon on Kentucky 302 in Johnson County. The work is scheduled to start today and go through March 23rd. The work is supposed to start around mile point 2.9. KYTC says drivers should be aware of flaggers and use alternative routes when possible. We're well, just ahead this morning. A politician down in Georgia makes a guest appearance in the world of science fiction she knows and loves. After a very nice Monday, rain chances and cooler air will plague us for the next several days. I'll track it all out for you in about three minutes.